It was going so well. For one shining moment, Hollywood threw off its cloak of entitlement and the gender-driven political messaging in movies so that they could bring us Tom Holland's final outing as Spider-Man, at least for now. But then, the final insult of a year full of cinematic insults. They released Matrix Resuscitations. I mean, reinterpretations. I mean, revisionism. Damn, I mean, resurrections? Ah, finally got there. So hard not to confuse the title with the intentions of the writers. The Wachowskis seem to have really, really let themselves go intellectually, in favour of jumping on the woke bandwagon that fits their lifestyle choice. In fact, I am these days mostly of the opinion that they must have bought the script for the original Matrix from some unknown writer, or maybe off of someone who is now dead, so can't complain about how their intellectual property has been abused. Because this movie is at best a bastardization of the original Matrix. But before I get started, please consider subscribing as that would really help me out. And if you like this content, give it a like. Okay, let's get on with it. The original Matrix movie was amazing, groundbreaking even. It was a movie that came at the exact right time for everyone involved. It made careers, it made reputations, and it made money. This new movie is the polar opposite because it is not amazing, it is far from groundbreaking, and it will do nothing for the reputations of any of those involved, and it certainly isn't close to making money. Watching this movie feels as though you are looking into some kind of magic mirror, in which everything you see is twisted and distorted and perverted into some kind of macabre shadow of what it once was. It makes a mockery of everything that came before, although, let's face it, the last two movies weren't amazing, no matter how much money they made. But they at least didn't feel as though they were taking the piss out of themselves, and they didn't try to destroy the original movie, which this one seems to. When I first heard they were making another Matrix movie, I was kind of interested, though that interest was tempered by my experience of the last two movies. Then I found Keanu was on board, as well as that girl that played Trinity, and that gave me some hope that just maybe I would be pleasantly surprised, and that this would be a movie worth checking out. And then I found out that Hugo Weaving would not be reprising his role as Agent Smith, and instead they were recasting the role with someone else, and what interest I had went poof into the ether. Some characters simply cannot be replaced by stand-ins. Those characters are namely Neo, Agent Smith, Trinity, and Morpheus. If any one of those characters were replaced, of which both Agent Smith and Morpheus were, then the inclusion of those characters will be a distraction from what the movie may be trying to say. Though, in the case of the Matrix regurgitation, I mean reenaction. I mean, um, revisitation? Nope, um, that's not it. Um, uh, don't tell me, I can get this. The Matrix reanimation. Oh, well, whatever it's called. It is so bereft of relevance, it has so little to say about anything, and it's so clearly just a cash grab that it really should never have existed. It will go down in history, should anyone remember it, as a parody of its great forefather. Now, I usually avoid too many spoilers because I don't want to completely ruin a movie for you guys in case you do decide to watch it, but in this case, they already ruined the movie, so there is no need to hold back from giving it the once over. The first part of the parody starts with a remake of the opening scene of the original Matrix movie, but instead of setting the scene for what is to come, like the original, this instead seems to have been done as a fatuously pointless way of trying to make us feel nostalgic, and to introduce two new characters, namely a uh, gender studies haircut and a Morpheus stand-in, who is actually an agent, but who realised that something weird was going on when he noticed some strange patterns after he had a shower, and who also knows that he is a computer program who wants to leave the Matrix even though he could not exist out of the Matrix. All of this will be explained by a load of word salad that you'll find yourself mentally skipping over, because it really doesn't seem worthwhile to try and make sense of it. Gender Studies haircut, who most of us will probably remember better as being the girl whose expanded role completely destroyed the Netflix Iron Fist series, is then shown as this movie's badass by fighting off a bunch of agents. Strange then that as the movie goes on, it seems to forget that she exists, and she slowly fades into the background, especially after we meet Niobe. And who the hell is Niobe, I hear you ask? Well, in this movie, she is now the leader, general, or whatever you want to call her, of Zion, which I'm sure you all remember as Headbanger Central from the second and third movies. She was one of the people who flew the hovercrafts, and since this movie takes place 60 years after the last one, she's been made up as though she's a very old woman, and her acting is terrible. 
In any case, Gender Studies Haircut believes that Neo is still alive and finds him alive. Yay! Apparently the machines brought Neo and Trinity back to life because one of the machines in the form of Neil Patrick Harris, who has now been put in charge of the Matrix, thought that together, but not too close together, they created amazing events and that they could use that for, well, who the hell knows what, the movie didn't really elaborate on it, beyond the mountain of exposition about how amazing they were when they came together. Ooh, uh, missus, that sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? So, Gender Studies Haircut and Knock Off Morpheus find Neo trapped in an area of the Matrix believing that he is now a game designer, and that the previous three movies were all parts of a best-selling game he had created. But he still keeps having flashbacks to the game that feel like they were real life to him. Trinity is there too, though she is married to a Chad, no I didn't make that up, and has children. She meets Neo in a cafe and realises that she knows him, and suspects that she was in his game. Blah, 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 blah. Much explanation and boringness later, we meet Neil Patrick Harris, who is pretending to be a neo-psychologist, or therapist as the weirdo in Hollywoods would call it. He keeps Neo supplied with blue pills so that he can stay unaware of his current existence, but Neo's mind keeps fighting back and trying to get back to Trinity. Bloody hell, even when I try to make this shit into some form of coherent story, it still sounds like absolute crap. There's a big speech from Neil Patrick Harris that includes crap like feelings over facts, and Neo was unimportant without Trinity. God, this movie is so pathetic and irrelevant, other than the message that both men and women together are important anyway. I didn't spot any trans nonsense in the movie, other than a brief reference to trans politics in a cringe-inducing far left-wing talking points brainstorming session between typical oddball nutjobs that would look much more at home in black block, shouting down people with common sense. And I have read all the stories about how the red and blue pills are an allegory for estrogen pills given to people who were trying to transition back in the 90s, and yes, there is a lot of leather and stupid haircuts, but that stuff matches the steampunk aesthetic the Matrix has always had, so it's not really compelling as a reason for trans content or whatever. But what is absolutely apparent, especially in the scene where we are seeing Neo and Trinity living their lives in the Matrix, is that this is a parody of the original movie. There are stupid references to Deus Machina and Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass. It was painful and laughable and things really didn't get better from here. The action is extremely formulaic and awkwardly slow and simplified compared with the original movie. It reruns through scenes that we have already seen because it has nothing new to say and no intriguingly interesting way of saying it. I don't even care how the movie ended because it added nothing to the series. It was just Neil Patrick Harris saying, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling 50 year olds. Sorry, Scooby Doo reference. Yes, that is about the level this program reaches, but without the humour and fun. But if you are silly enough to stay to the end of the credits, like I did, then you will find a scene where the far left brainstorming whack jobs make the argument that movies are dead, computer games are dead, and that the future is cat videos, which they will call the cat tricks. And at this point, I came to the conclusion that Lana Wachowski is completely in on the joke and that the whole movie was a self-aware screw you to an industry that is so desperate and money hungry that they pretty much forced her to make this pathetic nostalgia driven crap fest of a movie, or they would have done it without her. And so, in support of her taking the piss out of both herself, her own creation, and the money grabbing Hollywood elites, I say, don't watch this movie, that isn't what it was made for. Instead, go see Spider-Man No Way Home, it is much more worth your while. This has been Movie Suck, wishing that the new year will be free from the dross, stupidity and utter nonsense bullshit that has characterised the previous two. Signing out, leave a like, share, subscribe and I will catch you guys on the flip side.